This is Medellin in Colombia, acknowledged as the world's most dangerous city and home to Beja Vista, at one time the world's bloodiest prison, when deaths inside the walls averaged two per day. I'm here in Beja Vista Maximum Security Prison in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, I work here as a volunteer of Prison Fellowship. I've been working here for 13 years. And God brought me into this ministry through living here in Medellin where the death culture reigns. Uh, by this I mean death is a way of life here. Bella Vista. Bella Vista broke all the records for violence. The drug wars in the streets, the drug cartels battle for territory had basically moved inside the prison walls. Here in this room you have all the factions that are at war in Colombia. Here you have a paramilitary, you have guerrilla, you have common delinquent, you have people from the mafia, you have policemen, you have soldiers uh, who have fallen for some reason. But most of the young men here are in for murder. Killing is a way of life. There was a pastor who went up to a hill where you can see all Bella Vista. And he and a group of people began praying for the whole prison. And at that time of prayer, one of the women praying saw a big hand and in that big hand was the prison Bella Vista. Those people knew that Bella Vista was in the hand of God, and God was going to do something really big inside the prison. And God did do something really big. Gospel radio broadcasts over the prison speakers, a Bible institute, a new chapel and garden, a structured peace process, and a thriving church behind bars. Our church behind bars is it's really a dynamic what God is doing. Every weekend they do evangelistic campaigns and preach and have a, a sunny service. And it's all done by the inmates. Hundreds of the family members have come to Christ. And then with the family ministry, we do the follow-up of these families. And we have seen whole families restored. One of the families that has been restored is the Agodelo family. When my husband landed in prison and I started seeing the transformation in his life, it certainly had a tremendous impact on me, and I too came to know Jesus as a savior through my husband's ways. I thank the Lord that this brother, a godly man in prison, a fellow prisoner, that he was the one who showed me the truth. The mercy of God is very, very great to me because God has given me a godly husband. It's the husband I've always desired to have. All I can say is that it's wonderful. It's awesome what God has done in our family. Of course, I am one of the most convinced ones that God is present in this prison because from being the most violent prison in Colombia and in all Latin America, God took control of this prison and now we are the least, less violent prison in Colombia and in all Latin America. Jesus Amado Saria was once a major figure in the Colombian crime world. At one time, enemies offered two million American dollars for his death. Whilst watching television in prison, he saw the body of his murdered wife carried from their home. I was doing this work of God, visiting prisons. A few days ago, when I met one of the killers of my wife, 
because we have both have given our life to Christ. I was able to go to him and give him my hand, hold him and hug him, and crying with him about his sin, to give him my forgiveness and to ask him to forgive me. It was a very painful moment, but it was a pain that was totally separated from any hatred, from revenge, from anger, from anxiety. I'm sure that is the kind of pain the Lord Jesus Christ suffered on the cross for all of us. It's a beautiful mixture because I believe that our volunteers bring the life of they bring the life and the light of Christ into prison. But when you have light coming in and you find light inside, it's much more light. It's much, much more brightness. I think one of my greatest desires for the fellows here in this prison is that they might come to know Jesus as a personal savior. And that's what I do when I come in here. I bring them a living hope. How many have come to know Christ inside these walls? Well, as far as inmates, there's thousands. But you would go up into the, could say easily 100,000, because the, the outreach from this prison, they reach the families. There's 20,000 that come in on a weekend to visit their family members. We have a whole leadership team, a body of about 500 in the church behind bars, in a prison that has had up to 7,000 inmates. I am one of the people who was transformed in this prison. I used to work with the lieutenants of Pablo Escobar of the Medellin cartel. God, in his infinite mercy, when I was destroying my life, God gave me a new opportunity. He allowed me to learn in prison so that I could come to know him. What uh, most excites me is to see a person, a prisoner, transformed by the power of God. I continually be in awe. I never get used to it, to what God's doing in redeeming these, these men who were assassins of assassins, many of them, and seeing them transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are engaged in a spiritual warfare. As the Colombians say, we're in the mouth of the lion. And in Colombia, you pay a price to stand for Jesus Christ. We advance only on our knees through fasting and prayer. And if you could join us in this eternity, we'll know the difference.